Hi, in this video, I'm going to show how to uh, work out CT spatial normalization for DBS planning. Here shows the example of the results here. We normalize the CT image to a standard space so that we can bring in subcortical regions and nuclei. Uh, especially for DBS planning, this will help us to know where the electrodes are located. Um, just showing as the example here. The sample image we are going to use here, you can find it uh, from um, website at the GitHub, the, the new view image is a sample image of the CT. So we are going to use this one. And also there are uh, one open neural data set and we can download and then see how the result looks like. So here's the pre-processing steps. Um, I'm listing each of them here. So I will just follow each of the steps and then show how to do this uh, in the handout session. And first of all, let's look at how, what the data we, we are going to use here. Showing in this folder, this is the um, sample CT image downloaded from the GitHub of the Need View repository. Um, and also you will need to download DSS Studio in the Windows. There is, um, you can download a zip file, unzip it to a folder. Then you can see there are program, um, executive program that you can run. Double click on the DSS Studio uh, file, then you can run the program. And also there is one file that's also needed. That's the um, a mask in the standard space. You can get this file within the DSS Studio folder. So in Windows, once you unzip it to a folder, you can find it under the Atlas and under the ICBM 152 adult. There, the mask will be located here. So this will be the file we are going to use today to help us to extract the brain region. If you are using other um, operating system like Mac or Linux. There are also Atlas under the folder. Uh, in Mac, you will need to right click on the app uh, package to view the content and you can find it also under the similar folder structure. So it's, and here to just give an overview of what the program looks like once you start the DSS Studio. Um, the new program, you need to update it you may have an older version before the day here and I will recommend you update so that the function will be up to date. Let's look at the first file of look what it looks like. You can drag this file within DSS Studio. Then here we can see that this is the actual view of the CT. And this, this sample data you can get it from the new view package. And then here's the mask. So here's the mass is in the standard space. These two are not in the same space. This one is a subject uh, own space and this one is the MN9, we call it a standard space. And also there are open neural sample data. This is also a CT image, but here it has a, quite a, a little bit different contrast. I believe this has been uh, a little pre-processed, a little bit changing its signal window. So there, some of the brain regions are visible. Um, and today we are going to use the, the first CT image as an example here to demonstrate how we could um, work out the special normalization for CT. And first of all, in the file you get may not be the, in this file format we call the NIFT format. If you are getting the DICOM format from the scanner, you need to convert it to the NIFT format. And there are tools available like DCM to MRI. Um, you can get it and then convert it this DICOM uh, into this nifty format. So let's work out a pre-processing step as I listed here. The first step is to regret this image to isotropic resolution. So for most of the acquisition, it may not be isotropic. Here is near isotropic, but sometimes you may get a different uh, resolution. And so here is the vessel size, the XYZ, um, the solution may not be the same and it would be better to, to, to regret it to isotropic so that the special normalization could be done much easier. And the way to do this is go to the volume menu, click on regret. 
And choose a resolution you feel is more comfortable with or like close to the original position. And here, um, I would just choose one millimeter. And you don't have to put in three, you can just put in just uh, one value. And this studio will regrade it to the one millimeter resolution. Now the next step is crop the volume here. As we can see here, most of the <clears throat> regions under the brain scale, we don't really need it. We just want to focus on the part we're interested in uh, in the support your area. So we're, we're going to crop regions so that the spatial normalization when this studio registered this image to the standard space will be much easier. And the steps to do is, first of all, we, we are going to move the entire volume downwards so that this brain region is in the center and then crop the image to make it smaller. The first step is using the translocate function. Input the negative value. So here I can try like a value. Um, and if you see, if you feel that this value is not good, you can always undo it. And then just some trial and error and see which value give you the best and the, to move the entire brain volume in the center. The next is to just resize it. Click on resize and then pay attention to the Z, var, uh, the Z dimension here. So we can try it at 150 or either smaller. So if it's not good, we'll just undo it and then resize 140. So when, once we've cropped the image volume, it makes it easier to do the following step. Now we go, go to the next step is changing the signal window. So for CT image, there are hyper intensity signals coming from uh, the brain scar, the bony tissues. And here we would like to enhance uh, the, the brain tissue within. So, and the first step I'm going to do is just remove those negative value in the background. The function I'm going to use is under the ma value menu. Click on the lower threshold. That means any values lower than zero or any value I assign will be um, thresholded to this value. So put in zero. So any negative value will now be zero. So you see the background is all, all zero here. So you get this status bar here is showing the value where the cursor is pointed to. And now the upper value, I also want to apply an upper threshold, but here I can just check what would be the, uh, the best threshold I'm going to use. So changing this is like, allow me to adjust the signal window. And the purpose here is to, to, to see which signal range is best at, look, at enhancing those brain tissue. We should be able to look, to find out where the, the ventricle is, or even see some of the folding. This will help the SS studio to reduce this to a standard space. So I would say that this will be roughly the not a good point. So you can give it a try. Um, this one I feel like visibly you can see some of the brain structure and the upper value should be around 105. So what I'm going to do here is using an upper threshold. So any value higher than 105 will be thresholded at the same. So once you click it, you will see that the skull regions used to be uh, uh, thousands of the value will now be thresholded at 105. Now, so we complete the, the, the changing signal step and, and now we are going to do a um, more complicated step is to track the brain region. So the purpose here is see if we can extract this region so that it could be reduced to the standard space. Um, this essentially remove the skull hyper intensive tissue, but this is going to get in the way we want to normalize it in the to the uh, MNI template. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can zero those hyper intensity region. The function is within the value equation, 
And here, this would uh, apply an equation to each voxel signal. So the, going, the things I'm going to do is like the value that's greater than um, 104. So this would be the the scour regions, really high values, um, would should be zeroed. So so here it's lower than 105. That would be the brain tissue regions would remain. So I will use this question is like each each voxel signal will be the x. So the, if the x is lower than this value, multiply it by itself, then it would remain. So for those x higher than this, higher or equal to this value, um, will become zero. So click on it. So you will see that the hyper intensity, hyper intensity regions will be zero and make it zero. Um, and this is like kind of partially remove the bony tissue. And then this would, the next is that we would like to get only the brain tissue within. And here to do this, we will use the MNI mask I just shown in the beginning of the video. Before doing that, I will save a copy so that we can work out the next step. I will just put in like a, any pre-processing step or like give a post fix and save it to a new file. So next step I'm going to do to extract the brain region is make use of the the mask in the standard space. But as we can see here, this shape is not the same as the one of the, the subject. So there must be some registration uh, allow us to align the mask with this brain contour. So the function I'm going to use is within DSS Studio. Um, it's under the tool tab, called it the, under the linear registration. So here we are going to use linear registration. The reason is the mask and, and the CT image has different contrast pattern. It's, a, it's not able to allow us to work out nonlinear registration directly. For linear registration, we can use different contrast pattern to align each of them. Once click on the, the function, it would ask us to open a subject image. Such image is the, the image we want to work from. And here I'm going to select the mask because I'm going to want, I want to bring the mask, the mask to the subject's um, CT image space. So the first step is select the mask. And then you will continue to pack out uh, a download to asking for the template image. Template image is the space I'm going to warp it to. So here I'm going to set that the pre-processing, the pre process image I just saved. Then just to pop out a window, um, you can see here it, it allows us to, to look at two different contrasts. So, Changing this slide bar, you could switch the view between the mask and the subject image. So right now it's, it hasn't been aligned yet. And you can just click wrong registration. This will apply automatic linear registration, try to align this too. So purpose is try to get as close as possible, allowing us to eliminate the outside region. So this will take a little bit, you see the value keep changing. And in your case, if you see the mask is like not getting close, you can manually change those value. Try to give it like, like a, uh, a hint of where it is and then click on registration again to, so that this value is continuously refined to get a close result. That's okay. So once completed, you, you will see the value stop changing and then those buttons we could click again to do it but um, before doing so we could change different view it, it doesn't have to be perfect we just need to use a rough mask to extract the brain bottom so once it's like roughly aligned that should be good enough and then we use the files menu and click on the save transform image that means we are going to save the mass that have been transformed into the subject space. Click on this one. And then I will put in a new name. 
here I just put it a mask dot nii dot gz so here we save it so just to take a quick look of what we really save here in the folder just save this mask image and we, if we compare this with the pre-processed image you will see that it's getting a really close um, dimension, the, the same dimension and voxel size so that these two are already aligned in, in the same space and the next step I'm going to do is you once you open the, each of them in DSS Studio window what you can do next is I, in this preprocessed image I can multiply the value with another image click on the value menu and set that the multiply image and then set that the mask and just generate it so you will see it's like getting only the brand regions by multiplying this volume with the mask but as you can see here is like giving us a sharp eight edges which may not be good for registration even though most of the time it should be okay um, but I would like to do an extra step to make it smoother so let me go back to it now the previous step so what we can do is that we can smooth this mask by applying value mean filter so once you apply it you see it's like getting blurry a little bit and we can repeat it doing this step like five times or even more so you can see that once we apply more repeated doing this it's giving you a nice um, fuzzy threshold mask and then I can save it now we are going to redo this step for the preprocessed image multiplied it with the mask here so you see it's like getting some smoother results instead of like sharp edges here and I can save it to do the next step so now I complete um, the, f the first four next one before we work out a special normalization is to smooth the image a little bit so that we essentially using the, the function I just demonstrated previously so this will be the image <clears throat> and here we can pay attention to the noise like some of the speckle and <clears throat> to remove it we can just apply the mean filter the purpose is just to say smooth the image a, a bit to remove the speckle noise and still we can still get some of the structure still visible a little bit blurry should be okay so it will be a trade-off between the structure detail and the signal to noise ratio um, you can give it some trial and see which one work out the best um, and that's currently for this image I got from the sample data I feel this is, is sufficiently good enough in terms of still having retaining some of the structural detail and not too noisy so I'll save this Now we get to the, the last step, which is the most important step of special normalization. And in DSS Studio, we can use the template function with built within. Go to the second tab called the fit template and cartography atlas. This um, there is a function underneath that allows us to open a structural image and DSS Studio will normalize it to the extent of space, allowing us to bring in tracks or all the regions. And just click on this button here and open the pre-processed image we just saved this is your pop out a window in the middle this is a 3d window viewing the slides and then here we can work out a special normalization by just clicking the others and this will take a while and this is to apply normalization register all the image to the standard space and this step will use GPU if you have GPU download a GPU version of DSS Studio will make this job uh, much faster 
if you have GPU, the CPU version still works, maybe, but may take a while, like five minutes or more. Uh, the step is a like, DSS Duo will check which modality matches this image is being inserted and then apply spatial normalization. So now we see it's complete. Once it's complete, we show that list of adders in the MNI space. So we can bring it in. And then the, the easiest one I use most often is the brand stack uh, adders. And I can set all of them and then add it here. So here we could like uh, have a check on whether the registration is doing good or not. So the initial look here, we see that it's doing like a okay, okay job, even though I, would, I won't say it's the perfect, but it's most close to most of the structure we're interested in. We can see the salamas, we see all the regions, um, and can play around with the 3D window, but removing the white matter and gray matter. This allows us to look at the structure Aligning with the 3D of each of the regions. And for some of this data here, for example, if you found that the ventricle is very big, the sometimes alignment may, may not be good, as you can see here. Some of the contact is like, didn't really align well. And if that's the case, you can switch regular to large ventricle. So this would uh, inform DSS Studio to consider this subject may have a larger ventricle. So the back end of the uh, standard space, well, you would consider this as a prior. And once you set this, you can rerun the registration and see if, you, if that gives you a better result. So most, for a lot of subjects, uh, patient maybe older age and then have dilated ventricle, you may consider using a large ventricle as a prior for registration. This will consider this and then to help this studio register as a better um, accuracy. Then you'll take a while and then, and then get it wrong, bring all the data to the standard space. And once it's complete, we can do a check the same. Here, we can see how the regions look like. So right now it's like getting back a little bit, even though I won't say it's perfect, but in terms of the region of the cortex, getting closer instead of putting it into the ventricle. And of course, like sometimes if we get too much smoothing, um, the registration may not be very good. And if that's the case, you may go back to the previous step, reduce a little bit of smoothing, give this a few more structured details, see if that works out, reduce the, register the structure to the MNI, MNI space. And once you have this result, you can put uh, insert back the original image. So what you can do is go to the slice menu, insert other images, so we can give it back to the, um, the the original CT. And here, getting the original CT back, we also, you also need some registration. Um, you can go to the slices and adjust registration. And for here, you can see that um, the default of the situation may not be perfect. You see that this is still trying to give you some suggested value. There will be some rotation and translocation. And because we do, we work out the preprocessing, we know there's no rotation. So we can just remove those value, make it zero. And then in the advanced value, we can just cancel the rotation part and click refine. So it will give you some of the situation that say that Z have been moved by close to 50. And then of course we know that if that value is which we input it when we do a put processing and then zero this too. So this will could kind of manual way that we know what the value should look like and just click okay. So this will bring back to the original modality 
allowing her to see how you overlap overlay with with the in the regions bring in from the adders. And here also the function the building in DSS2 is allowing you to bring in some building tracks. So you can see here is a list. Once you work out the registration, this the menu also being enabled here that we can bring in um, some of the key pathway like cortical spinal tracks. You click on it, you bring in like the adder spinal cortical spinal tract and align with this subject, allowing you to study the relative location from here. So here will be the the, um, the step to do the CD special normalization. If you have questions, feel free to email me. Um, thank you very much for watching.